Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everyone to the uh, Digital Supply Chains Institute's uh, ninth blockchain collaboratory. Uh, the last one we did was on uh, GTA, GDPR and blockchain coexistence and uh, it was well attended and has good feedback and I would urge you to, uh, to read the paper on the uh, DSCI website if, uh, if you're working with blockchain, especially uh, inside the, uh, the European Union. Uh, today we're going to talk about succeeding with enterprise blockchain, uh, but let me uh, quickly cover the agenda and do a little housekeeping here. Uh, first, uh, uh, the uh, DSCI members uh, will have uh, open lines and can ask questions at uh, any point in time. Uh, those non-members who have joined today and, and welcome, we're, we're glad you did and glad to have you. Uh, can, submit, can submit questions uh, through the chat function, uh, which you'll find at the, uh, the bottom of the Zoom screen there. Uh, so for the agenda today, uh, first uh, we're gonna do a little update on, uh, on the Digital Supply Chain Institute activities and, uh, and what's been happening recently. And George Bailey, who's the managing director, will do that. And then, uh, and then we're gonna move to uh, Ganesh uh, Wadiji, and uh, he is the uh, chief, chief solution uh, architect uh, owner for uh, blockchain for supply chain from, uh, from SAP. And uh, we're glad to have him with us today and he'll give us, give us an update uh, in some level of detail as to uh, what SAP is doing with blockchain and, uh, and he will uh, focus on a couple of their, uh, their solutions. And I think he even has a little video to show us on, uh, on what Bumblebee is doing in uh, sustainable fishing, which, uh, which is exciting. And then uh, we'll open it up to, uh, to questions and, uh, and hopefully we'll have 10 to 15 minutes at the end to, uh, to address any questions that, uh, that you may have and uh, would like to ask. So as we get started here, let me turn it over to George to update us on uh, DSCI activities. Yeah, hey, thank you, Sean, and welcome everybody. I appreciate everyone joining. We have a really interesting program today that I think you'll all enjoy. Uh, a quick word about the Digital Supply Chain Institute for those of you who are non-members. We're a not-for-profit. Uh, we're based in New York, but we have operations worldwide. Uh, we were established by Sam Palmazana, who is the chairman and CEO of IBM. Uh, and uh, his whole mantra is about doing research that leads to results. Uh, if, you, if you know Sam, you know that he, he achieved uh, his objectives each and every quarter that he was CEO. And he, he grew the stock price from when I joined it. Uh, $68 a share to over $200, $212 a share when he left. So a tremendous uh, record of success. And he did that because he really thought that managing the business globally made a difference. And that's what we're working on. And managing the supply chain globally uh, is probably one of the most important elements of that. And it's something that we've heard from uh, something like 40 or 50 CEOs around the world as they talk to us about what matters to their business. So critical topic. Uh, we are a not-for-profit. It means we're not trying to sell software, hardware, or hours. Uh, we're only trying to get to what works. And uh, when we started to work on blockchain, we were one of the first organizations, uh, maybe the first organization way back in 2016, uh, to say, you know what, blockchain, of course, it's associated with cryptocurrency and all those things. But actually, blockchain could, in fact, be something that would make a difference to supply chains. And in, over time, it's proven to be exactly that way. Now, we're not trying to sell blockchain because we've done three different uh, projects with it. Two of the three, we decided not to go ahead with blockchain because we saw that there was no discernible benefit that typical database solutions would work uh, even better than blockchain. But in one of the three, we found out that blockchain was absolutely the perfect solution. It grew uh, uh, revenue, it grew uh, success, it reduced errors, and I'm talking about major amounts, something like over 30% reduction in cycle time, uh, over 30% improvement in productivity, and over 10% improvement in uh, defect rate. So really, really valuable things that, that changed the game and made the company scale up, and they now have a, uh, that company's name is Arison, by the way, um, uh, a very successful blockchain operation. So, uh, we have meetings that we do every year. We're having another one coming up in Dallas. We just finished one in Belgrade. We did the one before that in Serbia. Uh, we've done them in Zurich, Hong Kong, and so forth. But uh, in these meetings, we're, we're bringing together the top people to talk about what it means to have a digital supply chain. And the next one's going to be 
October 29th and 30th. Uh, we're having it at SMU in Dallas, Texas. Uh, uh, it's a by invitation only event. If you think your organization would be interested, uh, let us know. Uh, we'll, we'll look at it and consider it. Uh, we generally look for people who are C-suite people to attend because we want to have a, a high level forum with uh, important people. So for example, one of our panelists is going to be uh, Rex Tillerson, um, talk, who is a CEO of Exxon and of course uh, had other roles as well, you remember. Uh, and he'll be working with Sam Palmazano on this topic of transformation. So uh, blockchain has been a big topic in 2019. There's been a lot of discussion about it. And some people have said, you know, blockchain is not bigger than the internet as, it, as people first said when it came out. But it is valuable and there's some great success stories. Uh, one of our members, and we, we have, we've worked over 200 companies, not quite 200 companies over the past few years, but one of our members is, has been SAP from the very, very first day. And uh, they're a great organization with deep knowledge around blockchain. And Ganesh uh, has got a lot of insight on this topic and, and a success story to talk about as well, at least one. They've had many successes, but <clears throat> this Bumblebee story is, is just a great one. I'm sure you'll enjoy. So uh, Sean, that's it for me. I'll, I'll turn it back to you now. Okay, thanks, George. Uh, I might also mention that Ganesh is going to uh, join us in Dallas at the Executive Leadership Forum that George mentioned as uh, one of our featured speakers. So we're, uh, we're very glad to, to have Ganesh participate, participate with us both today and uh, in our upcoming event in Dallas. Uh, Ganesh is going to talk to us today about uh, SAP and what they're doing with blockchain solutions within supply chain, which is where he spends uh, spends all his time. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to a uh, an exciting uh, presentation here, and uh, and lots of good questions uh, at the end. Ganesh, welcome. Thanks, Sean. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, really excited about. Uh, this uh, webcast here talking about uh, SAP's uh, solution strategy around uh, leveraging the blockchain technology. <clears throat> uh, I am part of the solution management team for digital supply chain solutions at SAP, and my focus area is on blockchain. So uh, today's uh, agenda, I've basically broken down into three main sections. Uh, I'll very, very briefly talk about what is blockchain. Don't want to spend too much time on it. I'm assuming a lot of the folks on the call are familiar with it. Uh, then I'll spend a little time on, uh, from a technology perspective and a solution strategy perspective, how blockchain fits into <clears throat> SAP's uh, solution offering, uh, specifically from SAP Cloud Platform perspective. Then I'll get into the meat of the presentation, uh, talk about uh, the various initiatives we have had around blockchain for supply chain, talk about some of the solutions that we have launched into the market. And as uh, George and Sean mentioned, uh, show a brief video about one of our customers who is live on the blockchain solution, uh, that's Bumblebee Seafoods. <laughs> then wrap up with uh, one slide to bring all these uh, points that I presented today together. So with that, let me get started. Uh, <clears throat> The technology on blockchain uh, has been around for some time. Uh, it's a comp composition of existing technologies like decentralized ledgers, uh, cryptography, like public and private keys, hashing algorithms, consensus algorithms, etc. And all of these different technologies came together uh, and are used in, in what we look at today as, uh, as blockchain. Uh, what it provides us is, uh, uh, ability to uh, share and store information in a distributed manner. Uh, and uh, there are a couple of key elements to that. One is it provides transparency to all the different participants uh, because every blockchain node has the same information at all times and it's immutable. Uh, the immutability also brings in some key unique capabilities that as George was mentioning, uh, are very relevant to some of the supply chain processes when you look at multi-party collaboration. And the immutable, immutability feature comes in because all the transactions that are logged on the distributed ledger as blocks, they're all cryptographically linked together. So uh, there's no way to change a past information. If it, that does, it breaks the entire link uh, of the hashed uh, elements that are written to, to the distributed ledger. The other key capability that blockchain brings to bear is smart contracts and 
depending on the use case, you may or may not need uh, smart contracts. The examples that I'll talk about today, uh, for, uh, for instance, uh, did not use smart contracts. Uh, smart contracts are, uh, you can look at them as automated business rules that uh, execute on top of the blockchain nodes. Uh, and depending on certain conditions, uh, you basically run these rules to uh, initiate certain, certain actions. So it helps you in uh, keeping check on the various activities that are happening from a multi-party multi supply chain collaboration perspective, and also uh, ability to automate these business, business rules uh, during the execution. Uh, if you're specifically targeting to uh, track assets uh, across a multi-party setup, then you may not need smart contracts. But uh, as I said, depending on the use case, there might be uh, abilities of smart contracts that can be uh, that can be used. Now there are different blockchain technologies out there, uh, as well as distributed ledger technologies. So this is not an exhaustive list, but uh, primarily the blockchain technology is of two types. One is the public type, which we are all familiar with, uh, having heard of Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the other digital currencies out there. And then the other one is a permission blockchain or an enterprise blockchain, which helps you set up a private blockchain network. And these are the various uh, protocols or technologies that you see, as I said, this is not a exhaustive list, but uh, it's a good representation of uh, what's out there. And if you look at the top right quadrant, the three that I have marked here, Hyperledger Fabric, Multi-Chain and Quorum, these are the three private blockchain technologies that SAP provides as blockchain as a service on SAP Cloud Platform. And uh, depending on the use case, we will utilize one or the other of these blockchain technologies. Uh, Quorum is uh, a fork from Ethereum that was developed by JP Morgan Chase. Multi-chain is a fork of Bitcoin and Hyperledger Fabric is an open source uh, uh, blockchain technology. Uh, Hyperledger Fabric has the capability to utilize smart contracts and in multi-chain, you do not have smart contracts. So, so that's kind of just a brief overview of what uh, the blockchain landscape looks like. Uh, let's look at uh, from a supply chain perspective, what, what and where does blockchain uh, play a role? So first of all, uh, blockchain is a network play, as some call it. It's a it's a sports uh, it's a team sport, which means that there have to be multiple parties involved to leverage uh, the the blockchain technology. And uh, there are three key elements that I would say that uh, come into play. One is in these multi-party collaborations, uh, there is a lot of potential to optimize the business processes. Uh, reduce time and cost. So efficiency is one key play that uh, enterprise blockchain can enable. The second one is uh, to build a digital trust between an ecosystem of business partners, specifically when there is uh, not enough visibility or transparency uh, of information across uh, the multiple parties involved in a business process, or if there is uh, imbalance in the information that they have which basically leads to uh, situations where you need to create uh, audits and, and you have disputes that you need to reconcile, et cetera. So in those kind of situations and business processes, blockchain can help bring transparency and accountability. The third aspect is reliability. The inbuilt security aspects, uh, et cetera, uh, the, the cryptographically linked blocks that I mentioned, uh, and other features can help prevent risk and fraud in the supply chain processes. Uh, the data integra integrity brings uh, capability to automate the business rules and, and prove that something happened uh, by using smart contracts uh, and other, other aspects of, uh, of the blockchain. So with that, uh, let me quickly uh, <clears throat> A talk about uh, how SAP is approaching blockchain and where does it fall in the overall solution vision and footprint for SAP. So SAP's vision is to make every enterprise an intelligent enterprise. And uh, when it comes to uh, this, uh, digital supply chain is one of the foundational pillars of an intelligent enterprise. 
And there are three key elements or components that are needed for a company to be an intelligent enterprise. One is an intelligent suite of solutions, uh, which basically help automate business processes, uh, uh, be able to uh, reduce uh, the inefficiencies that are uh, in, in today's business processes and also leverage data in new ways to be able to uh, not only streamline the processes, but also come up with new business models. The second pillar is the intelligent technologies. And here we have a suite of different intelligent technologies, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, analytics, IoT, and blockchain. So we provide these capabilities to our customers as standalone capabilities, as well as embed these capabilities depending on the solution into our intelligent suite. And the third pillar is a digital platform, uh, which basically uh, composes of a cloud platform and uh, sophisticated data management capabilities. Uh, the cloud platform basically helps us uh, provide our uh, different business solutions on SAP cloud platform as well as other hyperscalers out there in the market. So if you look at uh, blockchain, uh, we provide from a technical perspective, SAP cloud platform blockchain. There are various components of it. Let me quickly walk through them. Uh, the very first one at the very bottom is the network extension. So SAP recognizes that uh, there are different uh, options and choices needed by our customers when it comes to, uh, sorry, when it comes to uh, leveraging the cloud infrastructure that they need. So SAP offers different ways to deploy blockchain solutions. Uh, it could be where you have one external node in the blockchain network. And uh, this could be a single node that is located in some region. Uh, it could be at a regulator, if, uh, if it's a regulator industry, or it could be an on-premise application that is close to uh, ERP system. So in such a configuration, an external node can be set up uh, using the network extension capabilities of SAP Cloud Platform Blockchain. Uh, the other option could be a multi-cloud option in which the blockchain node is provisioned on SAP Cloud Platform, but it's connecting to other nodes which are running on uh, other uh, cloud, uh, cloud providers. So uh, one particular business partner might be running on, um, say, Amazon uh, Web Services. One could be on Azure. So it provides us capabilities to integrate in a multi-cloud infrastructure. And the third option that the network extension provides is connecting your own network. In this case, all the nodes are working across multiple different cloud operators, but uh, it provides the customers uh, to connect the SAP stack, which is the business processes, application services, blockchain services, et cetera, to be running on SAP Cloud Platform. So that provides a very extensible way to leverage SAP Cloud Platform blockchain. Uh, the next one up is uh, platform services. This basically allows the technical connection of various open source blockchain technologies into the SAP Cloud Platform and also the SAP business processes that are running on SAP applications. So as I mentioned uh, earlier today, we provide this capability for uh, multi-chain, Hyperledger Fabric and Quorum. Then we have the enabling services. These are a set of connectivity options that help tie together blockchain uh, the various business applications and SAP Cloud Platform capabilities like S4 HANA Cloud, uh, uh, HANA integration, REST services, analytics, etc. And then lastly, we have the application services. This basically helps you create uh, applications and business processes that leverage blockchain technology. So here, uh, through these services, it helps consume blockchain functionality in cloud applications. And this doesn't require the deep knowledge uh, that you might need uh, to have, say, on the particular blockchain technology like multi-chain, hyperledger, et cetera. And it provides these APIs to leverage and consume this blockchain functionality. For example, if you're trying to record events as it ha happens across a multi-party collaborative process like a timestamp, then you can use a timestamp API uh, and consume this uh, into the application that you build. Or if you're trying to verify the state of a particular asset, then uh, you can uh, leverage the proof of state API to do that. Uh, and similarly, if you're keeping track of the audit trail uh, of a particular uh, business process, then you have the proof of history API. 
So that's a kind of a brief in introduction on the technical aspects of uh, what SAP Cloud Platform blockchain provides to our customers and partners. Uh, next, let me look at, let me talk about uh, the blockchain for supply chain. So uh, last year, uh, we started uh, initiating these industry consortiums. Uh, we set up three industry consortiums, high-tech, consumer products, retail, and agribusiness, and pharmaceuticals and life sciences. Uh, there were several members uh, that joined these uh, different uh, uh, industry blockchain consortiums. And uh, the purpose of these consortiums was to, at a business level, talk about uh, what blockchain is and how that can be used in, in these industry value networks. Um, the good thing about these consortiums was that uh, the discussions were more at a business value level, not at the technology level. Uh, the idea was to go through our design thinking philosophy uh, and, uh, and leverage uh, the fact that there are multiple parties in a particular supply chain, the suppliers, manufacturers, logistics providers, uh, as well as uh, retailers, if that happens to be particular to that industry, they're all together in a room and we discuss through a design thinking process of where uh, blockchain can uh, address the, uh, the current uh, business issues that they have as they are collaborating with each other. The outcome of this was more of uh, this prioritized list of use cases that, uh, that made sense for each of the participants in the consortium. Then this led to a co-innovation uh, exercise whereby uh, SAP provided uh, uh, the technology and working closely with these customers, we developed uh, several, several different uh, proof of concepts. And this is just a sample list of uh, the POCs uh, and use cases that we have worked on with the various customers, both in the supply chain and uh, other areas. So the top four that you see here, international trade, it was a proof of concept that we worked with Intel, Flex, uh, and UPS, as well as other uh, members uh, in, in a business network across the globe. We had several different proof of concept exercises where we developed uh, uh, an application to leverage blockchain and international trade process, and then uh, had these customers basically test this proof of concept applications. We even went a step further and we tracked a live shipment uh, in many of these cases, starting from the origination of that shipment to the end delivery point. The second use case that you see is uh, from a high-tech uh, industry consortium. This was safeguarding the semiconductor value chain against counterfeits. In many cases, uh, when the OEM is producing a particular product, um, uh, the company is uh, outsourcing its uh, manufacturing of components and there are multiple tiers of suppliers that uh, you have upstream in the in the supply chain and there are very uh, often cases happen where counterfeit components get into the OEM products and to prevent that how one can use blockchain to be able to track and safeguard against these counter counterfeits so so that was uh, the intent of this proof of concept the other two proof concepts, uh, pharmaceutical saleable returns, as well as the farm to consumer. These uh, actually are now available as solutions. The pharmaceutical saleable returns is now as, is a standard solution that we offer. And uh, the farm to consumer solution is uh, going to be offered later this month to our customers under the SAP Logistics Business Network material traceability option. So in the next few minutes, let me go through each of them uh, to give you an idea of uh, what this solution is about. <clears throat> so first of all, uh, on the saleable returns verification, this is uh, actually uh, is an outcome of a multi-year mandate that is coming from the from FDA where uh, the industry is trying to prevent uh, the counterfeit drugs from entering the supply chain and overall uh, uh, have uh, integ integrity into the in the pharmaceutical uh, value chain. Particularly uh, end of this uh, year, actually next month in November, as part of this serialization initiative, US legislation is requiring that 
uh, all the distributors that who receive uh, returns from the dispensers, they verify them before they introduce them back into the supply chain. And the saleable returns is quite a significant uh, amount of business in the US pharmaceutical industry. It's about two to 3% of the total sales. And uh, the two or the three top uh, wholesale distributors in, in the US handle probably about 80% of the pharmaceutical supply chain distribution. And the, from a saleable returns perspective, annually, they uh, handle about 58 million saleable returns. And this data was uh, from a couple of years back. So there's a huge potential here for counterfeit drugs to enter the supply chain from a saleable returns perspective. And that's something that uh, uh, the regulation is trying to uh, prevent from, from happening. So uh, here uh, we have been developing our uh, information collaboration up for life sciences solution to be able to handle these serialization uh, initiatives and mandates. Uh, and as part of the saleable return, we have a blockchain solution that helps, uh, helps uh, to address that. So here, uh, when the manufacturers uh, manufacture the pharmaceutical drugs in the, in the first place, they put the data uh, related to uh, those uh, pharmaceutical drugs on using the EPCIS standard messages on the blockchain. And uh, when a return comes back to the wholesale distributor, uh, they execute a verification request against this uh, blockchain and they get a response back. And that helps them verify this product uh, pack data uh, that this, this particular product is, uh, is an authentic product that was manufactured by a particular manufacturer. This helps prevent uh, the introduction of uh, fake drugs into the return supply chain uh, um, of the pharmaceutical drugs. So as of uh, last month, uh, we have about 25 manufacturers on this blockchain network, uh, including the 10 of the top 20, five of them are live and more and more customers are getting closer to being live. There are approximately 30 million items in this productive blockchain network. And from a wholesaler perspective, we have two of the top three US wholesalers who represent about 70% of the US market who are leveraging this uh, blockchain solution to verify uh, these returns. And for those supply chain members who are using a non-SAP solution, we have built routing capabilities to be able to send the verification request to this solution and then get a response back. So that's on uh, the pharmaceutical uh, industry blockchain consortium POC that then resulted in a standard solution offering from SAP. The second one was what I mentioned was the farm to consumer. And here the consortium members uh, wanted to uh, address issues like uh, the huge amount of food that is wasted across the globe and the difficulty that they have in recalls. We are all familiar with recalls that have happened in the, in the food industry where it's very difficult for the manufacturer or the retailer to really identify which of the products are uh, tainted and they need to be quarantined and they end up basically being on the safe side, pulling everything off the shelf. And this is a huge, huge these are huge issues for, for us in the world. Uh, the number of uh, people uh, who are affected by poor quality of food is uh, pretty high uh, because the foodborne diseases and uh, the complexity of uh, responding to product recalls is, uh, is very difficult. And uh, as a result, a lot of food is wasted across the globe. <clears throat> so uh, the intent of this proof of concept uh, was to bring several customers together and uh, look at these business goals. Number one, reduce the food wastage. Second is how do you streamline recalls and reduce the amount of product that needs to be recalled and do a very targeted recall. So the technology goal was to look at how uh, blockchain can help uh, address these goals through a proof of concept and augment our traceability solutions with, uh, with blockchain. So uh, this uh, exercise, as I mentioned, happened last year. <clears throat> and then we've been working on bringing to market a, a, a standard solution for other customers to, to leverage. And this uh, solution will be uh, released later this month uh, under the umbrella of SAP Logistics Business Network, which has various different capabilities like freight collaboration, track and trace, and material traceability will be 
one of the capabilities that we will offer. So the idea here is to help improve uh, the transparency and uh, trust between the various uh, supply chain partners who are involved in, the, in this end tier supply chain, leveraging the blockchain technology. The solution will provide capabilities to alert these supply chain partners in case there is a quality issue of in a food product. This could happen anywhere in the supply chain, could be one of the components that go into, uh, ingredients that go into the end product or the end product itself. And to do this, uh, obviously you need to be able to integrate into the data, into the backend system, so that you can create a, a genealogy uh, uh, provenance that uh, you can leverage through analytics to be able to quickly zero down on where uh, the issue is and then uh, address those issues. Uh, also, uh, there are other initiatives in the food industry like sustainability, like sustainable farming, sustainable fishing, et cetera. And for that, you, you need to know where your uh, key ingredients are coming from. And, and those are some of the other initiatives that, uh, that can also be uh, uh, addressed through a solution of this nature. So one of the <clears throat> um, customers I wanted to talk about uh, is uh, Bumblebee. Uh, Bumblebee started a project with SAP Cloud Platform Blockchain last year. And then in a very short period of time, they were able to go live. Uh, they're using SAP's blockchain technology for uh, ocean to table transparency and then enhancing their brand equity uh, through sustainability initiatives that they have at a corporate level. Uh, here, uh, they, uh, their aim was to uh, be able to track every, every fish that is caught off the oceans, uh, islands of Indonesia. These are high grade uh, tuna fish that, uh, that, are, uh, that are caught off of, uh, of the Indonesian villages and they are promoting a fair trade for, for this tuna. So, uh, and also they want to be able to leverage all the information and data that they collect along the way in two different ways. One is to provide this uh, traceability solution to the end consumers. So when they purchase their products at a retail store, they can scan a QR code using their smartphone and then be able to see uh, different kinds of information about, uh, about where, the, where the tuna was caught and uh, how, block, uh, how Bumblebee is leveraging this information to promote sustainability and fair trade, et cetera. So, uh, so the retail buyers and consumers get this uh, transparency and, uh, and they're able to provide confidence to their uh, end customers in, in the products that they're purchasing. The second aspect was to really analyze uh, the fish buying trends and fish catching trends through SAP Analytics Cloud. So here uh, they're able to, over time, identify historical performances and help improve the villages where the fishermen live to improve uh, their uh, possibility of, uh, of catching this, uh, these, these, these fish. And they're also working with several non government NGO organizations as well. So there's a good quote here from the SVP and CIO of Bumblebee Foods, Tony Costa. Uh, he said, our blockchain project with SAP will help trans transform our social responsibility program with the suppliers and fishing villages of Indonesia. And our passion for and commitment to the environment and sustainability will improve the li livelihoods of these Indonesian fresh fishermen and enhance their communities. So it's a pretty uh, notable cause, as well as uh, a lot of value for themselves uh, from a business perspective, as well as their consumers, uh, like retailers and end consumers. So that's a, a very powerful story around leveraging blockchain uh, in, in the supply chain area. So with that, uh, let me uh, take a few minutes and uh, run a quick video uh, to demonstrate uh, this story. So let me stop sharing here and so Gautri can share the video.
successful is that we track every piece of fish. And we share that information and that transparency with the people who end up eating this fish. We have our first look at the new blockchain analytics for the supplier. Let's go through and see Jafar's fish. And it pulls up the amount of fish he's caught on every day, how much they weighed, and how much was fair trade. Let's let the bet out. This is connected to the SAP blockchain. It's based on permissions. So only a specific supplier will give access to their specific data. Nice. Aku jadi pingin nilain Indonesia untuk selama-lamanya. Saya Jafar, saya bisa membagikan pekerjaan saya kepada dunia. Thank you. Let me share my screen back. Uh, sorry about the audio there. Uh, but I will uh, include uh, <clears throat> a link to this video that you can watch uh, in the slides that you'll receive so that uh, you can revisit this. But basically, uh, as I was explaining, they are able to catch the data all the way from the time the fish is caught and weighed to their processing plants and their quality plants uh, to packaging plants and, uh, and load that data into the blockchain. And using the permissions capability uh, in the in the enterprise blockchain, they're able to provide uh, specific uh, read-only and write-only permissions to the various parties involved in the supply chain. And as you saw in the very end, there were the two examples. One was the scanning of the QR code on a, on a, a grocery item uh, list, uh, and then be able to look at several kinds of key information about uh, the, the food item, and then also, uh, internally using SAP analytics to analyze the various amounts of types of data that they are calculating and they're collecting. So uh, with that, let me uh, move on to yeah, my yeah. last, yeah. Yeah, Ganesh, uh, before you move on here, sure. I, I think we have a couple of questions specific to uh, this use case, but uh, yeah. one, one that I have mm -hmm. is, uh, is why is uh, blockchain essential to this solution? Why, why couldn't it have been done differently? So uh, basically, uh, it comes down to the point that uh, you have multiple parties that are involved in here, and uh, you need to be able to collect this data in a fashion that uh, is transparent to everybody. So, so blockchain enables uh, uh, that capability. And uh, also, uh, you don't have to create a, a single database where you have to now then give permissions to everybody to maintain and log their information. And you lose some of those key capabilities that I mentioned earlier about blockchain, like immutability and transparency, et cetera. And uh, finally, they want to be able to take this. Uh, this is just their first step. They want to in extend this to other products that they have uh, bring to the market, as well as leverage this information for uh, other, other use cases that they are looking to, to promote. So uh, not being uh, today, uh, the way this data is captured is a lot on um, handwritten notes, which are then entered back into the system. Here, you can automate a lot of this stuff. So, for example, down the road, maybe using IoT sensors or just uh, barcoding and then reading that through a scan and uploading that information automatically onto the blockchain can help provide this instant access to the data and visibility to all the suppliers. And in case there is, as I was mentioning earlier, if there is a, a scenario that happens where there's some quality issue that was, uh, that needs, leads to having to recall, they know instantly where that information, uh, that issue occurred and they can contain that very rapidly. Okay, great, thank you. And a, a related question, which is, which is <laughs> one you and I have, uh, have discussed uh, in general is, uh, Proof of value, because we talk about doing a proof of value, prove the business case, not uh, not prove a proof of concept, which is mm -hmm. proving the technology. Yeah. So, yeah. so when Bumble, when Bumblebee looks at this, what's their what's their business case? Where do where do they derive value from this solution? Yeah. So the value that they derive are at two different fronts. One is obviously they are 
uh, the corporate initiatives around sustainability and fair trade. So they are able to uh, ensure that, uh, you know, they, uh, the fishermen are, are paid fair trade value uh, and they help uh, grow the fisher, fishing communities there in Indonesia. The second value that they see is around providing confidence to the end customers and consumers who are consuming their products to be able to show them transparently the source of the of the fish and where it was caught and what type of the fish it was, et cetera, et cetera. And the third big value that they see is analyzing all of this data that they're collecting across the across the supply chain and leveraging analytics to be able to look at uh, fishing trends, uh, uh, where the different uh, spots are in the ocean uh, when these fishermen leave the their villages early in the morning to be able to direct them to where there's a probability of uh, catching more fish. Oftentimes these fishermen are leaving like five o'clock in the morning and they come back late in the afternoon and they might just catch one or no fish at all. So uh, being able to collect all of this data and analyze that and then uh, incorporate other data that they have down the road in the enterprise, be able to uh, better uh, their whole supply network uh, in, in, uh, in their quest to uh, provide quality products to their customers is, are some of the key areas that they see value. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so with that, let me quickly wrap up with, uh, with one slide to summarize uh, what I talked about. So uh, first of all, uh, enterprise blockchain and the success of this is predicated on uh, a network participation. So it's not a single enterprise kind of a solution. It's a, it's a multi-enterprise solution. So you have to look at collaborative processes that are happening across multiple uh, companies and uh, everybody willing to be able to share the required data to be able to collectively gain efficiencies, uh, reduce uh, <clears throat> uh, issues that uh, that are in their business today. So it's very important that uh, there's network participation to uh, to ensure success of enterprise blockchain projects. Uh, second, uh, there have been a lot of questions about the the scalability issues that might arise with blockchain technology. And what we have observed is that the technology itself is developing at a very rapid pace and uh, it can be used today in a productive fashion. We've seen several folds of increase in the volume, uh, transaction volume throughput, uh, for example, in the multi-chain blockchain technology that we use for both these solutions over the past uh, 12 months. So uh, with that, uh, blockchain definitely has the potential to enable uh, efficiency gaining, uh, gaining efficiency in supply chains. When you look at cross company business processes, it provides uh, transparency, which leads to several areas to reduce, uh, reduce costs. And uh, some of the other use cases that I didn't talk about, the blockchain for international trade is a prime example where such kind of a transparency and a leveling leveling field for everybody involved and, and opportunity to eliminate uh, intermediaries uh, can really help uh, um, drive efficiency in the supply chain and reduce costs. And lastly, uh, blockchain technology can be used to ensure product safety, uh, authenticate products and promote sustainability initiatives as we just saw in these two examples that I, that I walked through. So with that, uh, I come to the end of my presentation and I'll be happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you, Ganesh. That was, uh, that was an excellent uh, presentation. We had a couple questions here from, uh, from Gary Matula that, uh, th that uh, I think you answered portions of, but he has one here about uh, how many companies are actually live with the various solutions. And you talked about, uh, you talked about the farm return solution, sellable returns being five companies live with it right now. But let me, let me ask a slightly different variation of Gary's question, which is, what do you think the, uh, the key success factors are? We see, you know, we see lots of proof of concepts, we see some proof of values, but of those very few actually uh, scale up to a production solution. What, what do you see as, as the key success factors or said another way, the inhibitors to, uh, to scaling those proof of values? 
Right, that's a, that's a good question. And that goes to the very core of the blockchain technology. So as I said, uh, it's very important from a success perspective that you have uh, your ecosystem of business partners part agree to participate and share information. So sharing information is key. Uh, and that's a discussion that uh, one needs to get into depending on the use case. So there could be uh, certain aspects that uh, that a particular business partner might not want to share. For example, the details of the formulation of a product or the bill of material or uh, the price or the quantity that they're trading, et cetera. But uh, in spite of that, there are, depending on the use case, there are uh, several areas where uh, value can, can be uh, ascertained. But uh, definitely to be able to do that, uh, you need participation from, from all, um, all parties involved in, in the multi-company process. And that could be a challenge and that could take some time. So you might start off with what we call as a minimal viable ecosystem. And we recommend at least three participants in the value chain to be involved in that. And uh, then as you start seeing value and demonstrate that to other members of the, of the supply chain network that you're doing business with, then you can help uh, expand the the business network constituents in your private blockchain and continue to expand on the on the value front as well uh, the other key uh, area where you know depending on the initiative if you're doing sustainable initiatives or promoting sustainable initiatives etc you will need to go all the way upstream to say the farmers or the fishermen uh, who basically might be technologically challenged or or uh, might not have any huge uh, uh, stake in, in participating in this. So there should be certain incentives for them to, uh, to be able to provide the data that you need. So in this particular example of Bumblebee here, promoting the fair trade and getting fair prices for the fishermen is an incentive for them to be able to uh, uh, be part of uh, such, a, such a network. And the approach that we are taking uh, from SAP's perspective is to uh, make it as easy as possible for these very upstream participants to be uh, what we provide, what we call as data contributors. So uh, their participation uh, could be uh, access to SAP solution free of charge if they're just providing data. But if you are reading the data and analyzing the data, then you know you are an active participant and and uh, will be subscribing to a different set of uh, solution. Um, capabilities from, from SAP. Okay, thank you. We have a uh, question here from Jean Ruda. Uh, the question is, can the sellable returns logic be applied to promote circular ecologic design in economics and other industries besides pharma? For example, peril, end of life, and uh, in agricultural waste. So he's asking if, if the solution can be, the use case could be extended to uh, to yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we have been having discussions along uh, several different use cases of that type. So uh, it'll basically boil down to uh, the data model uh, and, and the different uh, elements that need to be captured. So depending on the use case, we will need to look at that. And uh, this particular use case was very, very specific to the pharmaceutical industry because uh, it's this is the second wave of the regulation. The first wave was about standardizing the data that is need to be captured or, or had on a QR code on, on each of the product packs, which is like the batch, the expiration date, the EPCIS number, the product name, et cetera, et cetera. So the data model was built on top of that to be able to capture that information. So then these other use cases, even though uh, they sound similar, we will need to uh, basically uh, uh, look at uh, what exactly is the data, where is it coming from and, and how and what you need to analyze that. But uh, our, our uh, vision is that uh, specifically like this uh, material traceability solution that I talked about, this is very similar to other industries. Uh, for example, the, the high tech industry I talked about, uh, uh, safeguarding uh, against counterfeit components, where basically you're trying to look at the provenance uh, of the product end product and, and you'll be able to trace that all the way back to the source. So uh, as I said, uh, the 
the main distinctions will come in what kind of data you want to collect and hence uh, have the correct data model. And the second one would be what would be the user experience look like for the business, various roles, you know, what kind of analysis they need to do and what kind of insights and action they need to take based on that particular use case. I hope that answers the question, but if you want to discuss that further, feel free to feel free to reach out to me and we can talk about it. Yeah, I think you're on a, uh, a couple points here, Ganesh. One, one is that uh, track and trace seems to be the, uh, the most widely um, identified uh, use case within, within supply chain. Mm -hmm. you know, virt virtually everything you see and we see uh, is, is in the track and trace area where you're, right. where, where you're looking to identify something up and down the supply chain, whether it's the, uh, the manufacture of a product or the shipment of a product. Um, right. it's, 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 it's all variations of, of, of the same use case. Right, right. Uh, and the other thing is is that she mentioned is is access to uh, to data and identifying mm -hmm. data and mm -hmm. uh, and figuring out where the sources are and where you can get get it from and and uh, DSCI has uh, has recently done some research in this area uh, that we uh, we call data trading. Uh, there's white paper available on our on our website, but it's really uh, putting together a framework and a structure for for. Uh, as you're looking at cross enterprise uh, transformation opportunities and in, uh, in data sources that uh, that get shared up and down the supply chain is identifying what you need, who has it, and uh, and, and how you can uh, can exchange that uh, that data in a uh, in a meaningful way. Uh, so I'd I'd urge anybody interested in that subject take a look at uh, take a look at, look at the white paper and. Uh, it uh, it might provide you with a framework that you may find valuable as you, as you continue to look at uh, at cross enterprise transformation. Uh, we also have a uh, question here from Luis uh, Hurtado. Uh, it says, "Hi Ganesh, do you have a case in mining and mills business and in trading commodities exchange markets?" Um, off the top of my head, I do not remember. Uh, but we have a whole slew of use cases across multiple industries. So uh, definitely, I'm, I'm sure we, we cover those, <laughs> those areas. I'll have to go back and, and look at that compendium of use cases. But you know, if you're interested, please reach out to me and we can, we can discuss this uh, further. Okay. Lewis says, uh, thank you very much. I think you answered his question there. <laughs> uh, do we have uh, any other questions here? Uh, he says uh, he will uh, reach out to you if you see okay. it there. Okay, excellent. Okay. Other questions, either from the panelists or the members or um, others via chat here? Yeah, one of the uh, one of the key things that uh, that we have found at the uh, at the Institute is is it's uh, to get started, it's very important to uh, to select the right use case. Um, I can't tell you how many times we work with our members and uh, and, and you look at what they think is a uh, an opportunity for blockchain, and you go through that use case and you uh, and you say, wait a minute, there there are other simpler ways to uh, to do this that may not be the best answer uh, for. Um, blockchain may not be the best answer for implementing that uh, that use case. So we have put together a, uh, we call it the BFI, but it's the Blockchain Fitness Index that uh, takes you about 10 minutes to run through. It's a total of 22 questions and, uh, and allows you to, uh, to score your your uh, potential use case against, uh, against others. And uh, uh, give you an idea whether or not that you're on to something that uh, that could potentially provide value to uh, to your business, and then uh, then there's part two of that, uh, and this is all our blockchain return framework that uh, that then helps you do the uh, the gap analysis, uh, set up the uh, the business uh, business outcomes that you would expect from a proof of value, and uh, I mentioned it before, but proof of value is uh, is really what you want to focus on. Don't test the technology. The technology works and the technology is getting better every day. What you want to do is make sure that you're identifying business value and, uh, and have a way to measure the, uh, the success of that, uh, of that business value. 
And uh, this gets back to a question that, uh, that Gary had earlier on, uh, on how do you, how, how do you uh, measure the value and determine where it's generated? You need to make sure that as you go through your, your, uh, your proof of value and your pilot that you've got a set of business measurements that are quantifiable and, uh, and you can, uh, where you can determine your, uh, your success and then turn that into a business case and, uh, and scale it. Uh, yeah, I totally agree, Sean. Those two tools that you mentioned are extremely useful to, to get started on understanding where blockchain technology can be applied and then what is the value, I think. <laughs> two key yes. answers that you need to have before, before you get started, yeah. yeah. And I uh, got one more question that we'll close out on here. This is, uh, this is uh, one for you on, uh, it's from Ray. I'm uh, not gonna try and pronounce his last name. Uh, but uh, any use case scenarios in the electronics industry to resolve counterfeits and more important anti-tampering along the supply chain? And I think you've got, a, uh, you've got an answer for that one. Yeah, so the, the high-tech uh, uh, use case that I mentioned was kind of along the same lines. Uh, so uh, the, there were several different use cases that came up through the discussion, but the, the one that was prioritized on the top by all the participants was that there's a huge issue in the industry where these counterfeit components enter into the end product through this complex multi-tier upstream supply chain, which is global in nature. And uh, depending on where these products go into, it could be in a seat belt of a car. And if there is an issue or defective component that goes in there, it's, uh, it's uh, critical that uh, those things don't happen because they are life-threatening. So, so things of that nature were all discussed and uh, the, the general nature of the use case was, we want to be able to look at a proof of concept where we bring all of these different entities in the supply chain together and be able to collect the data as the product is being assembled and manufactured to be able to track each and every component that goes into, into that end product. Right, and, uh, and, and, and Ray asked to follow up here. He said specifically anti-tampering in malware. Right, right. Yeah, so then, you know, uh, um, what, uh, what we kind of ended up doing was having a unique identification for each of the components that goes in there that's verified on the blockchain and all the certificates associated with that component and who's providing that component, that's all visible to the entire value chain. So those kind of in, uh, information and data can be uh, leveraged on the blockchain to provide the integrity that is required. Okay. Great, thank you, Ganesh, and I'd like to thank you for your uh, taking the time today to uh, to educate all of us and share with uh, with us what uh, SAP is doing. And certainly, you're making some uh, you got some good use cases, and uh, you're moving out out of the uh, out of the lab and into production. Uh, so very very impressive work, and we thank you for sharing uh, sharing your insights with us today. Uh, to all the attendees, thank you for attending. And uh, you've got uh, Ganesh's details there. I see there's a question or two that uh, I may not have gotten to, but uh, please follow up with uh, either myself or, or Ganesh and we'll get you an answer. So that concludes today's call. Again, thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you. And just one more thing regarding the white paper. Uh, I will be sending out uh, the necessary materials and the recording of this webinar available to all the attendees via email. Hope that answers. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Sigathri. Thank you all.